friends out there in Facebook land. This is Angie Gady with I Feel the Rush here in Brilliant, Wisconsin. I'm coming to you once again from the porch because the snow has finally stopped. Yes, it's June, so I think that we're out of the risk of having a snowstorm. Although now that I said that, it's probably going to happen. So thanks for joining me. For those of you who haven't been here before, again, my name is Angie Gady and the mission of I Feel the Rush is to help you bring things from the outdoors inside so that you can help to relive your outdoor experiences time and time again. Um, today, we are just coming out of turkey season, so here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we got some turkey feathers. This is the story. We're in between seasons now, so I'm kind of just looking around the house. What do I have a lot of? What can I show you guys? I'm really, really looking for some projects that you would not have seen before. So you're going to see it for the first time here, live. So without further ado, I wanted to show you a planter idea using your turkey feathers. Yes, taking your turkey feathers outside once again. Um, they're awesome because the natural turkey feathers are going to be water resistant. Like your feathers aren't going to get wrecked because it rains. So I'm not worried about putting these on a planter. However, I'm adding a little touch, allowing you a little more flexibility on your planters. Now, we're taking this. You've all seen it. You get it at the dollar store, Walmart, Menards, everywhere you're going right now. These are out there and they're super inexpensive. You've seen the ones online that are expensive because they've been painted and decorated. You can do that. Yes, you can do that. So all you need is pot, no matter what size. You wanna go smaller, you wanna go bigger, start small, try it. You're gonna love it, shake it up. So we need this, we need some paint. You can get this at Walmart for, I use, I guess it's Krylon, but I don't think it really matters. Um, a paint and primer, you can get it for like three, four dollars. Uh, on this particular project, I used black, but if you haven't been in the painting department lately, do yourself a favor and check it out. I'm going to get an orange, a yellow, a red, green, and I'm going to make all sorts of different pots. So super simple pot, use the spray, you know the rules, use a lot of paper, don't spray on your other furniture. It's going to be a blast. You're going to want to use a lot of different colors. So these two to start with. You're gonna want a sealer when you're all done. So it's just a clear sealer. And you know the rules, feathers. Turkey feathers, duck feathers, pheasant feathers, whatever you want, use your imagination. Okay, so those are the materials. And hot glue, always hot glue, always hot glue. Okay, so first, I used the black paint and I painted it black. Ta-da, ta-da. Very simple, this took me like three minutes. I took it, put it on the box, made sure it wasn't windy, painted it. Then I took my feathers. I'm going to show you the back side of this. What I did here is I just took, sorry, you can hear the people on the road. We're in brilliant, but there are still the occasional car. Um, I took a little tiny piece of cardboard. You can see it. I didn't have to be meticulous about it. Don't be a perfectionist. I just cut a little Moon, half moon shape and then I took my turkey feathers and like always 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 we're layering feathers it's so simple if you haven't seen our other videos please go out and check these out after if you can layer if you can layer things you can make any of these projects so as you can see from the back side I started with these bigger feathers now what I want to explain to you is first I'll show it to you so what I want to explain to you is all of the feathers in this little mini fan are actually from a wing. They're from a turkey wing. I'll show you right here. They're from a turkey wing. All of these feathers are from here. So if you're disposing of these, please keep in mind you can put these to use. So this from this. Um, so what I started with was... Uh, as you can see, I took some of the, like, what I would have considered longer feathers from the wing and put them in the back. Now, what I want to show you is if you use, like, a corrugated cardboard, you can actually stick these in the little holes here in the cardboard. I hot glue them in there just to make sure they're not going to come out. After that, I layered with these little inner wing feathers. 
I love these little black and white feathers. Every time I pull, pull them out, they're a little challenging to, to pluck, but once you get the process down, they're super adorable. And this is the exact project I want to use. I have a thing for like mini things, so this mini fan is just adorable. So again, I layered with these black and white ones in the back. And then I took some of the smaller wing feathers and I glued those on top. And then I went smaller and smaller and smaller until that was it. And this honestly probably took me 10 minutes. So five minutes on spray painting the pot, 10 minutes to make the fan, hot glue, and the next step was the magic because what I'm going to show you now is going to make your pot so versatile you're going to thank me. No, <laughs> I just actually I just kind of saw the magnets on the fridge and thought why don't I put a magnet on there and then you can swap things out. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So we have my pot. I glued a magnet on the front of the pot with hot glue. I don't know how the hot glue is going to hold up outside. I'm just going to be honest. Maybe if you use E6000, um, but I'll keep you posted. We'll see if this actually comes off, but I'll get it a little closer. It's just a magnet. So I have the metal part facing out, the plastic part facing the pot, and I glued that thing right on there. Then I took another magnet. And actually, I have a confession. I used one of our not-so-good-looking magnets. It has a shotgun shell here. And actually, it just bumps it out just a little bit from that fan, which is going to give it a little bit of depth when you put it on the pot. One word to the wise. When you're put, selecting your magnets, make sure they are opposing ends so that when you try to stick them to each other, they don't resist each other. It's very important. Be disappointed if you got it on your pot and they wouldn't actually stick together. So I've got my magnet, I got my magnet, and if this cooperates, I will have a fan on my pot. I know this seems like not so. Whoop. Okay, there you go. All right, so you can see it's kind of standing out from the pot here. So you're going to see that. I'm going to put a plant in it so you can get the full effect. My magnets don't seem to be very strong. So maybe when you're selecting your magnets, make sure they're strong enough that it holds the fan up. And also, let's talk about the size of the pot. You could go with a soup, oof, a much bigger pot, or you go with a much smaller fan. So it depends on what you're looking for. But I can see already that the magnets that I selected, they're working, but they're kind of being a little jiggy jaggy, whatever that means. So that's what it would look like, but let me put a plant inside. I have a confession. I do not have a green thumb, so don't laugh at my plant, please. Yeah, it's just a little. <laughs> so ideally, I'm probably going to put like a fern or something like that in there. Um, and I actually contemplated putting, um, if I went a little smaller on this fan, I was actually contemplating writing on the pot itself, like can't stop the flop or something like that. Some cute little saying, because sometimes a little saying adds a little something special to it. So basically, that's what you got. You got the pot. You've got your magnet, you've got your fan, and with a little bit of uh, just making sure you've got the right magnet uh, adhesion, I guess maybe I'll call it, um, you just have an amazing thing that gives it personality. If you're going to have this sitting out on your deck, out on a table, out on your front porch, people are going to notice. They're going to wonder, where did you get that? And I must have one. So you're going to say, well, this is the tur turkey that I harvested this year. And again, it makes it a conversation piece. It makes it a piece of memory decor because when I see this, I'm going to remember this is the turkey that I harvested this year. So that's what it's all about is, again, the premise of I Feel the Rush is to make things that you can keep in your home that remind you of those experiences, of the people you were with, of the amazing adventures you've been on, and 
Just with a little creativity, you can get some home decor that no one is going to have. I can guarantee you, no one is going to have this. So if you have questions, you want to give it a try, get creative, use your imagination. There are no rules. You can't mess it up. I'm here to support you. I trust you. And uh, just get creative. Think outside the box. So if you like this idea and you want to share it with your friends, please share on Facebook. That way it's easy to find if you want to come back to it in the future. Check out our other videos. If you have any questions on this project or suggestions, I would love to hear them. Also, if you have suggestions of projects that you would like to try, but you're not feeling that adventurous, I would love to help you. So send me a message. You get some feathers, hides, antlers, you name it. We'll try it. So again, Angie Gady here with I Feel a Rush, and you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, IFeelARush.com at our website, and come visit us again every Thursday night around 8 p.m. Central Time. We are here showing you you new, unique ideas for projects with all sorts of different uh, outdoor items. You never know what you're going to find, although you, lately you'll find a lot of turkey feathers because we're just coming out of turkey season here. So, um... Again, if there are projects you'd like to see, I'd love to hear about it. Have you tried some? Please send me some pictures. I'd love to hear how you're doing. Uh, if you're in the Green Bay, Wisconsin area, and you're looking for um, presentation material, you know, you have a hunting group, an outdoor group, something like that, um, send me a message. We would love to help out. We have tons of projects. We can kind of give people an idea of what they can do with their harvested materials. And um, that's it. So good luck with your crafting or your projects. Good luck with whatever hunting you're doing. We would love to hear from you guys. We love the community that we're starting to build. All of you are just excellent. And I love chatting with you and hearing about your adventures and following you. So reach out to me. I'd love to touch base. And um, happy feather, feather crafting, everybody. So have a great night and we'll talk to you again soon. See ya.